with take a step with DJ Premier, um, I would say probably Firing Squad is my favorite MOP album of all time. Uh-huh. And Premier, uh-huh. of course, did a lot of that. Um, yep. So when going back to Firing Squad for a minute and bringing it full circle to now, but re- knowing that that was early in your careers, you guys had already done one album, had been on compilations and different things. What do you remember learning from Premier, who in 96 was obviously super accomplished, super productive, super popular? What do you remember in that 95, 96 era of making Firing Squad that you learned that has helped you all the way up till today? Well, from Premier, I learned that um, he's, it's cool to be yourself. That's actually what I learned from Premier because he's this super accomplished producer, one of the greatest of all times. And just like to everyone else, that's what he is to me too. But I know him enough. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think like, it's like when you meet your superhero, you expect him to still be the superhero and do superhero things. And he does that, but he's an actual person. And I realized he showed me that it's cool to just be yourself in this music industry. Now at that time, or, or not just the music industry, period in life um at that time i was a you know i was fresh in the business i was a hothead i figured i had to poke my chest out enough because i was from brownsville brooklyn i needed you to understand it if not it was gonna be some problems (laughs) why i don't know why the hell i was thinking like this i was in a whole nother world i should have just calmed down a little bit but i learned that from premier that um anything that you want you put your all into it um it's gonna happen for you especially if you love doing it. This man really loves what he does. Dude, I don't know if you've ever seen him perform. Like, God bless Guru. As they, when they perform as, as Gangstar, like, I was always mesmerized by that. Our brother Guru is no longer with us, so Premier goes out and he does these performances by himself. Dude, he slaughters it. Like, <laughs> and look how... Look, how humble he is like i said when i first saw him do it i was like wow dude what you know what the hell was that he goes i learned that from y'all i'm like huh so he performs on the turntable like he's doing it like he's uh, doing an mop show it's nuts bro when i tell you it's nuts and i always make a joke but i'm like i don't like djs and producers Cause I can't figure out how to do it, right? I can't, <laughs> I can't figure out how to make beats or DJ. So I make jokes with him. Yo, I can't stand you DJs and producers, but man, he is such a he's such a good guy, man. And he's something that he's he's a person that everybody can learn from. You know what I mean? On the music side and just as a grounded human being. Yeah. I've so had, shout out to DJ Premier. I've had the fortune of interviewing him a few times over the years and seeing Gangstar perform and then seeing him DJ for like Freddie Fox and other people as well. Uh, Jay Rudy Damager, of course, he did DJ for. So I've seen him in many different settings in different states and talked to him. So it's it's amazing. And then to your point of being able to learn and see people evolve and still be amazing, I thought was, it's remarkable. And that's... That's something, too, with you with the song Cyrus, how you say, like, you get down or you get down, playing off <laughs> the robbery yeah. and the music side. Um, yeah. That's something that I really uh, enjoyed and appreciated in the sense of having, like, thuggish, gangsterish versus mm. comedy. So yeah. <laughs> how did you, like, how do you think that works back-to-back lyrically? You know what, I, I just... Now that you're asking, I'm going to think about it, but I just don't think about it. I just, I lay what makes sense and what feels good. You know what I'm saying? Like, now I'm, in, I'm really in a clear head. Bro, look where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so in a clear head space, bro. Like, I'm just out here and, you know, when it comes to making music now, I just, I just think about, and that's crazy because I thought about this last night. Like, I used to make sure I wrote every line to match 
the the line before it in a certain and you know it's got to be intense to a certain way now i realize i don't have to do that all the time i have to just be witty uh, of course always do my best but just be witty and just make people feel what i feel at this moment so it's you either get down right you come get down with me or you get down because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play with you i'm cyrus bro look <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cyrus. I'm not going to play with you. And this is all entertainment. Let me make sure I say that. Oh, yes, I am from Brownsville, Brooklyn, which is basically every other urban community in the world. Um, but I'm only entertaining right now. I'm only making records so people can like them, people can enjoy them. I ain't here to hurt nobody. I don't need you to get down. I got my family down. I got kids. They, they down with me. I don't, need, I don't need you to get down. I got a couple dollars, so I don't need to rob anybody or none of that. You know it's only music, champ. That's it, man. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because the, the We Busy song, the title track from We Busy, the listening session, you are talking mm -hmm. about the your version of me is different from what everybody else sees. Mm -hmm. So uh dig deeper into that a little bit what does that mean to you right well people and and, and i can go back i'm going back now right um people actually thought we were animals bro people would not even want to have conversations with mop i've had people literally say to me men and women say yo i didn't want to talk to you because i thought you was going to be me i thought you was going to try to do something to me oh, what am i a fucking animal <laughs> what am i an animal here but that's the perception people get when they don't know you. So this is why on all of my solo records, like I'm giving you Billy Dance from other angles and other, you know, from other angles. You're still at point blank range though. You know what I mean? It's still the same. It's just the Billy Dance that you may not know. Like I said, like there was one kid going like, eh. he never was able to rap, <laughs> right? But his favorite artist, goes billy's nuts you know what i'm saying so it's just it's just it's just I, I need people to see another side of me other than uh and i don't want to say annie up but i i just don't want people to think that i'm just an animal i can't have a meet and i can't come up and do business with people um and like i said dude people literally said it to me like i, I didn't think that you <laughs> basically they're saying i thought you needed to be in a cage like <laughs> what do you mean like <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, your, your version of me is different from what y'all see. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's different. Whatever comes out of T, uh, you know, whatever you see on TV or come out of the speaker, yeah, it's me. But like, you know, I got a wife. I want to go home. You know what I mean? I, I literally sit there and watch Netflix sometimes. Like I took my kids to the park. I, you know, what I'm saying like I rode bikes with the kids. I played baseball with my son. You know. Uh, play with the little with the little kitchen set with my daughters you know what i'm saying like i'm a human being so i just need people to see see um see there's a little difference from what you think you know you know what i mean i'm i'm a person champ well you had also uh with annie up the one thing that i've always been curious about it since that i would say is your biggest hit as mop but it didn't come right away it didn't come early in your career so you know that coming several years three albums deep and all that other stuff what do you think it happening later what effect did that have do you think on you guys as opposed to if it had been your first or second single off the off to the death or something well it gave us <clears throat> it gave us the opportunity to actually grow before the career had grown you know what i mean um kept us grounded you know what i mean uh and it made us work harder so but the same excitement that i had from the time i put out my first record is the same exact excitement that i got right now i just know a little more so that's what the timing of the success of annie up did for me it helped me grow to that point to understand no one's going to give you anything in this business and just because you're the most amazing rapper on the planet doesn't mean everyone is going to accept that and you're going to make a ton of money and you're going to do this and do that so that kept me grounded so when annie up did happen i was already 
grounded. I already had Premier in my life, Freddie Fox in my life, Lays Fox, everybody else that was in my life that helped keep me grounded too. You know what I mean? So I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't need, um, I didn't need anyone. I didn't need no validation anywhere. I was already validated. You know what I mean? So it, it helped that time and help. And uh, sometimes it's like, you know, sometimes you go, when you see an artist is not ready, sometimes it just could be the way that they lay their lyrics or the way that they make their song. That means they're not ready. But then they're also mentally, you know, there's that mental thing where you could, mentally could not be ready. Cause, so can you imagine me getting ridiculously rich, blowing up crazy soon as How About Some Hardcore came out? It would have been problems, bro. <laughs> it would have been bad. Look, it would have been problems for the entire industry. Uh, I might have turned into Eddie Kane Jr. from Five Heartbeats. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I needed the experience, and I'm glad uh, that it happened this way. I wouldn't change it, bro. No, I mean, that's, uh, I think, a testament to both you and Fame's, you know, evolution that you were able to be in the game for several years, keep growing, and then have a, have a huge hit. You know, I think right. that, that's a testament to all of that. Exactly. Exactly, brother. Exactly. So um, before you go, uh, give us the, uh, what should we expect from the Billy Dance Project, and when is it coming? Ah, see, that's the thing with the Billy Dance Project. Here's what you can expect. You can expect everything. So just to make this clear, the Billy Dance Project is just like, it's like the super album, right? Where you get your singles off of every album. So my first single was the six pack. It's just a six part single, but it's one single for me. My second single was the Baker's Dozen, um, a single, but a 13 part single. Second single for me. Third single, We Busy, the listening session, 12 part single third single for me um when the billy dance project come i'm gonna have i already got like 40 records for that and i started the billy dance project before i started the six pack before i started baker's dozen and before i started uh we busy so uh, i just figured i needed singles for the projects uh so i'll put those out but it's gonna be so many different styles of records on there um some grounded dude i got a record on there that I, I made a record about my wife right um because we met when we were 13 years old so but through the course of my career i felt like that was something i couldn't say because people wouldn't understand it because remember they think i'm an animal right so <laughs> so i got a record for her on there i got a record with my son on there as well as on uh we busy i got a record with my son um as well uh la boogie's his name um so i got a bunch of record of course i got them street records because it's those are easy for me to do and I got to feed my fan base. But I just got, I mean, I just expect good music. That's it. That's, that's what my focus is now. Make good music, brother. As you should. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, champ. I'm at it. I'm at it, man. All right, Billy Dance. Well, I appreciate you coming through the Unique Access, man, and look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the support, man. And whenever, if you need me for anything, I'm here.